Gentlemen, start your engine. Throughout NASCAR's storied history, there have been plenty of instances of silly season changes that shock the world. There have been many mid-season driver changes, including some that were flat-out trades. One thing there hasn't been much of, however, is whatever you want to call the relationship between Hut Strickland and Jimmy Spencer's Winston Cup Series careers. Former championship owner Rod Osterlund returned to the Cup Series in 1989 with Hut Strickland at the wheel of his number 57 Heinz Pontiac. It was the first full season of Strickland's career, and the team probably couldn't have dreamed up a worse start than they had, failing to qualify for the Daytona 500 and finishing 41st at Rockingham. Things started looking up with an 8th place finish at Atlanta, but then they failed to qualify at Richmond. Their season had very few bright spots, which included a 4th at Michigan and a 9th at Richmond. Strickland finished the season 26th in the Cup standings with a points total that ranked 26th out of the 26 drivers who made at least 26 starts. Jimmy Spencer took over the number 57 car in 1990 and was fast out of the gate. He led off with four straight top 15 finishes with a best of 8th at Rockingham, putting himself 8th in points after four races. That level of success didn't continue throughout the year as Spencer finished 24th in points. When Strickland left Osterlund's team, he bounced around a bit before he joined forces with Bobby Allison to drive the number 12 car beginning in May of 1990. A ninth at Talladega and a sixth at Pocono showed signs of promise over the combination's first five races together. They grabbed a handful of top 15s but never cracked the top 10 the rest of the way. The team vastly improved in 1991, finishing the season with three top fives and seven top 10s while finishing an impressive 16th in points. The highlight of their season came at Michigan, where Strickland led 27 laps and finished second to his close friend and Bobby's son, Davey Allison. Strickland seemed poised to continue to grow into a contender heading into 1992, but unfortunately that was not the case. Three top 10s over the first six races had Strickland sitting 14th in points, but the relationship became rocky from there. He made his final start for the team following the Southern 500 in September. At the time of the breakup, Strickland sat 22nd in points. Allison tapped Jeff Purvis to pilot the number 12 car, but after four disappointing races, Spencer yet again took over following Strickland's tenure. The new driver seemed like a match made in heaven for the team. Spencer finished 4th at Charlotte, 11th at Rockingham, 5th at Phoenix, and ended the season with another 4th at Atlanta. The momentum seemed incredibly high heading into the 1993 Winston Cup season for Allison's team. The number 12 car traded in its beautiful blue and white paint scheme for the black and yellow Meineke colors to start the 93 season. Spencer promptly went out and gave Allison his best season yet as an owner. He finished 12th in points with almost twice as many top fives as Strickland had during his time with the team. The Berwick, Pennsylvania driver also notched 10 top 10s, giving Spencer 13 over his first 34 races with the team. In comparison, Strickland had 13 top 10s over 71 races in the 12 car. The same season, Strickland teamed up with legendary owner Junior Johnson to drive the number 27 McDonald's Ford. An impressive fourth place finish in the season opening Daytona 500 was the team's lone top five of the season. 1994 saw Strickland jump to Travis Carter's number 23 Smokin' Joe's Ford, leaving the 27 seat vacant. He was taking over a ride that was once Spencer's, who drove for Carter previously in 1991 and 1992. It seemed more than fitting that Spencer once again filled Strickland's former seat, partnering with Junior Johnson for the 1994 season. The Strickland-Carter partnership didn't produce the success that each side had hoped for as they failed to qualify for two races and finished 26th in the point standings. Their sole top 10 of the season was a ninth at Dover. On the other hand, Spencer enjoyed a very rocky, but also a career year, with Johnson. The team failed to qualify for one race and finished 30th or worse in 10 of the 29 races they did start. He was also injured in a crash during the inaugural Brickyard 400. At the same time, Spencer won two races, the Pepsi 400 in dramatic fashion and a few weeks later again at Talladega. He also captured the first pole of his career. At the end of the season, Spencer wound up his roller coaster season 29th in the point standings. Strickland and Carter parted ways following the 1994 season, leaving the number 23 seat open for, you guessed it, Jimmy Spencer, who went on to spend the next seven seasons driving for the owner. 
The consistency of working for one team paid off for Spencer as he finished 20th or better in five of the seven seasons, which at the time were better than all but one of his points finishes in his career. He never visited Victory Lane, but came awfully close a few times. After leaving Carter's team in 1994, Strickland struggled to find the consistency that Spencer found. He drove for Kenny Bernstein for most of the 1995 season, grabbing two top fives but finishing with a career-worst average finish. He took over the number 8 car in 1996, where he only finished with one top 10 finish over the season's 31 races, but boy was that top 10 dazzling. The team brought an absolute rocket ship to the Southern 500, where Strickland led a race-high 147 laps en route to a second-place finish behind Jeff Gordon. The next season and a half was not kind to Strickland at all, finding little to no success. He failed to qualify for 9 of the next 37 races and found himself bouncing around rides for the remainder of the season. Both drivers found various levels of success at the Cup Series level. Spencer found victory lane and seemingly benefited from longer tenures with the same team. Strickland pulled off some incredibly fast runs in a handful of cars. Their stats might not necessarily mirror each other's, but their names will be forever associated with each other to each and every Winston Cup fan.